Welcome tech for row channel. My name is Michael and today we have the focus on the DJI Osmo Pocket. Two months after it's been initially released, a marvelous camera gimbal which supports up to 4K at 60 frames per second including face tracking. Well, not quite face tracking with the highest resolution, so hang on a second. Is it working now? Yeah, I guess, perfect. So, two months later, the good, the bad, and the accessories you need. Let's get started. This review is not going to be one of the many hyped reviews as we had them on the start, and we still carry on having about uh, the Osmo Pocket, uh, although this sounds like a threat, and not at all. I, I do believe that the Osmo Pocket is a wonderful, close to brilliant solution for vlogging. And I, I would like to talk a bit more about the strengths, the weaknesses, and as mentioned already, the accessories you might need. The more time passes, the better the device is getting, and kudos to the DJI's firmware team because the steps they have in terms of upgrading are quite fascinating. Because you can easily find tons of reviews about all the features, the navigation, the hardware specs, and so on, I want to stay a little off these topics and we'll focus here on the features that you need to know about, no matter good or bad, and the most important accessories you might need in order to improve your shooting experience and also the shooting possibilities. Because, if used as it is, it might be not as powerful as some people want to see it, and because I'm doing a lot of reviews of action cameras, so shooting outdoors, I always try to be as reasonable as possible. I will, of course, speak about what is different when shooting with GoPro, for example, compared to the Osmo Pocket. Let's go for the positives first. The way DJI is sending this device to us is quite simple and minimalistic, but at the same time powerful. The box packs the Osmo Pocket itself, a few connectors for smartphone and this fabulous protective case. It is something like a hard case, perfectly designed with the right cuts to give you access to everything you need. Without removing the gimbal, you can change or insert micro SD, and should you need to quickly shoot something, taking it out is a matter of a few seconds. Now, how much time do we need before it is shooting ready? Let's compare with the GoPro Hero 7 Black. I guess, surprising for many people, this is not too much of a difference. A few words about the user experience, which is, of course, very different between both. The Hero 7 is designed to be mostly used standalone. Although the Hero app is super powerful, you can control every single bit of the shooting modes from the camera menus. Not quite the same with the Osmo Pocket. While DJI have realized that being bound to the smartphone is quite a serious bummer, there still are functions that are a bit easier to be configured from the MIMO smartphone app, and besides that, the display is really small, so if your eyes are not in a perfect shape, I would strongly recommend to look for alternatives. Since we mentioned the smartphone apps, one more advantage of the GoPro is the ability to live stream to YouTube and Facebook. Hopefully, DJI are working on integration of such functionality as we speak. Resolution support is quite good, and having the stunning 4K at 60 frames per second is a fabulous opportunity. No need to mention that stabilization with this gimbal has a lot of benefits compared to EIS, and especially in low light. The size definitely does matter. Because of the small scale and the lack of counterweight, if you're used to deal with large gimbals and heavy cameras, your hands will have to adapt to the new situation, and while you're working on improving your hand-holding skills of something really small, the footage might seem a little jumpy. There are a few different shooting modes with the gimbal, including time-lapse and slow motion. Each of these modes is suitable for different scenes, and I tend to like the FPV mode a lot, especially for vlogging. You also count on face recognition and face tracking, which is pretty fabulous. You can see right now me being tracked, and by the way, if you want a comparison versus a much more expensive camera with a larger lens, uh, check this comparison between the um, Osmo Pocket and the Panasonic G7 with the Leica, what is that, it's the 14mm lens? No, the 15mm lens. Yeah, I think the Osmo Pocket does a pretty good job considering its small scale. 
you may find the selfie option which turns the camera towards yourself so you can see at the same time uh, the camera lens and the display something I'm using right now and it, it almost lost the face tracking. There also is control of the following speed which is the reaction time between your movements and the compensation. If you choose it to be faster, the compensation may seem a little aggressive, but that is not necessarily a bad thing as it gives the footage more realistic dynamic look while keeping it quite steady. Too smooth is not always great, and especially with vlogging, the more dynamic the environment is, the better perception the audience will have. A few days ago, DJI has published a new firmware which finally brings the cine-like color mode which allows better post-processing and color grading and captures dynamic range in a better way mentioning briefly the rest of the other good things excellent battery life with kind of always on display check uh, possibility for charging while shooting check and possibility for external microphone also check by the way that's the difference between using this external microphone and and recording with the internal microphone uh, terrible acoustics in this room so uh, yeah you can feel the difference could be pretty huge and it's a nice to have overall this small device is quite powerful and ready to offer you end-to-end -end video and audio experience in a pocket shape most of the people are talking about the good not too many dare to speak about the bad number one autofocus yeah pretty bad no matter how many updates we get, the autofocus will likely never be great as it is contrast-based and combined with the relatively slow CPU inside, we cannot expect miracles, especially with the higher resolutions. At least the autofocus in 4K is considerably better than the Lumix G7, for instance. But if you're a dark-skinned person, you should better use the autofocus single mode and just maintain the chosen distance. Slow motion is up to 120 frames per second on Full HD, let me tell you about a smartphone which can shoot 960 FPS in Full HD and costs less than the Osmo Pocket. Yes, I'm talking about the Pocophone F1. The GoPro Hero 7 supports up to 240 frames per second in Full HD. And I guess enough said about slow motion, could be better. Uh, next point is time lapse. The good news is that you can create wonderful motion lapses thanks to the gimbal. The bad news is that other than that, you can't achieve anything significant. I'm mostly upset because of the lack of hyperlapse-like feature, as we have it with the GoPro. Even if you do something like hyperlapse, which in theory should work well on a device with a gimbal, it looks horrible. This is where GoPro simply smashes the Osmo Pocket with the feature called Time Warp. And this is where electronic image stabilization, which is mostly software-driven and happens at post-processing, beats the fun out of the Osmo Pocket. There are two things I truly disliked at the start. The first one is this kind of connection. One more situation that endangers the integrity of your phone's port. And also the fact that you are so dependent on the Mimo app. Looks like there have been enough people complaining about it as DJI seemed to slowly bring all the control in the stick itself and already more and more of the Pro features are available via the menus. At the day of releasing the Osmo Pocket to the white public, it was sort of undercooked. Two months later, I think it's getting close to being super useful. And now we seem to get the taste of more and more good spices. And I think that concludes the major disadvantages. Let's switch to accessories. If you follow the channel on a regular basis, you know that I'm as reasonable as possible when it comes to buying new accessories and I try to stay like that when uh, analyzing which are the best for the Osmo Pocket. Because there is no tripod mount, you have to buy one. Online there are plenty of models that are 3D printed and they're just fine. Here is one for five bucks, totally worth it. Having a tripod is awesome, especially if you're going to make time-lapse videos. The second thing I got is a bike hook, and I'm, I'm using it even when recording this very video. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, any footage from a bike because outside it's still, it's still winter. Apparently, the build quality of this one is not too great, but I have the feeling that if you manage to attach it well to a bike, this could be fabulous. The third and currently my favorite kind of accessory, well, because we have 
a lot of manual controls. We can control the ISO, we can control the shutter speed, so it makes it very reasonable to get good lens filters. I got a pack from Freewell, eight of them, which are super easily attachable. The price is still a bit steep, and you may go for the cheaper packs, but I truly love this, mostly because of that. Yeah, magnet-based quick-release filters, the easiest kind of mounting, and there is no way them to fall down. There are ND filters, and the combination between ND with polarizing effect. As I already mentioned, I got these from Freewell, and since I'm still waiting the pack from Polar Pro, uh, I can say the quality is great, the way of attaching is great, um, I simply have no remarks. Very easy to carry box, and um, a nice pouch that you can use for cleaning them, so overall, um, entirely satisfied with what I got from Freewell. And so, DJI Osmo Pocket, or the GoPro Hero 7 Black? I think that's the wrong question, because if you truly need good photography gear, better have them both. The Osmo Pocket is more cinematic, more manual, better stabilized, and the low-light stabilization is way better than the one on the action camera. But if getting a GoPro or a cheaper action cam, you will add the options to get more mounts and accessories, fixed focus, which for dynamic environments could be even better, waterproof rating or a case to dive with, and possibly time warp or better slow motion and certainly a larger and maybe nicer display. So no, I don't see the Osmo Pocket as a Hero 7 alternative, although in some situations probably I would pick to go out with it rather than taking an action camera. This device is great on its own, the smallest standalone gimbal with camera design so far, and with a bunch of remarks, it still is an excellent device. Maybe that's why I like it that much, because it's imperfect. Well, that's been all about today's review. If you liked it, I hope you're gonna double check if you're subscribed. If not yet, then, then just make sure to do it, because I'd love to see you again. If you didn't like the review that much, man, maybe, maybe you can give me another chance and check some of the other reviews just right after I shut up. It's been a great pleasure to have you around. My name is Michael. Looking forward to see you soon. You have a great day. Cheers.